G'day guys, welcome back to the Devon Too Good Investing channel. So last week, Tattooed Chef participated in the 34th Annual Roth Conference and in this video, I'm going to summarize some of the key points they spoke about during their presentation. So before I get into it guys, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. So in my notes here, I've got seven main points that Tattooed Chef's management team spoke about. The first was regarding their incorrect accounting. The second was regarding their two recent acquisitions. The third was regarding their run rate and line of sight in terms of revenue. The fourth was automation of their facilities. The fifth was regarding store expansion and sort of how well they're doing with uh, SKU expansion as well. And then the six was regarding margins and sort of the levers they can pull going forward to bring their gross margins up. So the first thing they talked about was their incorrect accounting. And this came, this was because of a tax credit related to their SPAC merger. And in their recent earnings, Tattooed Chef's management team did mention that they have brung on new accounting staff so this doesn't happen in the future however the mistake has been corrected and we can now move forward from it and another good thing was that they actually <laughs> they actually uh, released their earnings on time this time around as in the previous quarter they actually released their earnings late and I think this is largely due to the new accounting team that they have hired so it's good that they've sorted out their corporate governance. Um, we just need to monitor this moving forward to make sure that this is a sustained improvement. The second point was regarding the two acquisitions, the first being Foods of New Mexico and the second being Belmont. So in terms of Food of New Mexico, they're going to be making Mexican products out of that facility and looking to get into ambient products, including... Uh, plant-based snacks uh, they've already got burritos coming out of foods new mexico already and out of belmont there's going to be products coming very soon and these will be refrigerated bars and matt williams the chief growth officer went into the reasons why they selected refrigerated bars over ambient bars and he said that Refrigerated bars is a very fast growing space and it's still being defined. He also mentioned there isn't much competition in the refrigerated bar space. There's only one major player and that one major player isn't really a healthy option and is high in sugar and is also peanut based which is high in calories in general. Whereas Tattoo Chef's product is going to be oat based, it's going to have less sugar and it's going to have adaptogens which help with, uh, they called it like brain fuel. See, I'm not too sure on, uh, you know, whether it actually works or not, but that's what the management team is saying. And if we then move on to the third point, it was regarding their revenue and their line of sight regarding revenue. And Stephanie, the chief financial officer, came out and said, that they've got a clear line of sight for, you know, all the way up to $700 million in annual revenue. And that should be achieved within the next few years. And that's also without any new acquisitions. So this would represent strong revenue growth. If they do get up to $700 million in revenue in the next few years, <laughs> I'd be pretty happy with that. And they did mention that they will need minor capex and that goes on to their fifth point. So they're going to be spending capex on automating their facilities. Uh, this will increase margins as they will be able to reduce their labor force and increase efficiency in their uh, factories. And I do remember in the uh, earnings report that they will be spending about $20 million on CapEx to automate their facilities. So the fifth point was directed at Chief Growth Officer Matt Williams and it was regarding store growth 
as well as uh, skew growth. And Matt mentioned by the end of 2021, they had almost hit 15,000 stores and they have seen large acceptance of new product categories and SKUs. And he gave the example of Target where they've gone from two SKUs from a couple of years ago to now 25 SKUs nationally now. He also mentioned that there is a bit of weakness in the northwest region of the US. However, all other locations in the US are strong. And he also mentions that the Northwest is about one and a half years behind the rest of the country in terms of adoption there. And they're working with uh, stores in the uh, Northwest, or it might have been Midwest. Maybe I'm jumbling that up. But um, regardless, they're working with those stores to sort of help aid uh, education regarding plant-based products. And then the six, and you could argue one of the most important points was uh, it, it was regarding margins and some of the levers they can pull moving forward. So recently their margins have been hit really hard by freight and shipping costs as well as cold storage costs. And these have been abnormally high due to inflationary pressures. However, they should eventually normalize Uh Recently, Tattoo Chef did go into a new cold storage deal to reduce uh, storage costs by half, and they're also going to be able to grow their margins through automation of their facilities. And another lever they can pull is the move into refrigerated and ambient products. These products tend to have higher margins, so as they grow revenue in those areas, their gross margins should increase <clears throat> as a result of that. And then hopefully over time, freight costs and shipping costs will slow down, hopefully decrease, and that will also be a driver of gross margins as Tattoo Chefs, uh, they, they count shipping costs within their cost of goods sold. Another point that was made by CEO Sam Galetti was the economies of scale. So pretty much essentially when you've got, let's say, for instance, 50 million in revenue, a lot of your costs are going to stay the same even when you expand your revenue. So, for example, if if Tattooed Chef were to do a billion dollars in revenue, their costs wouldn't be as a percentage as high as what they would be if they're, they're only doing, let's say, $220 million in revenue, would, and that's approximately what they're doing now. So, as they expand their revenue out over time, their expenses will grow slower than their revenue, so that will lead to margin expansion. So guys, those were the points mentioned on the Roth conference here. I hope it was uh, valuable for you. Hopefully, I saved you some time by summarizing the key points. And make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.